Hey everyone, this is a New Script on the Block. This podcast is about the art of screenwriting and writing for short films. This series dives into the minds of writers at all stages of their career to share their creative ideas, give and receive feedback on the work or the works of others. The goal is to open a public discussion about writing and share new and creative methods or approaches with one another to help each other grow. I'm reading this off a script. Hey guys, welcome to New Script on the Block. I'm Alyssa Eshelman, and this is Nira Manalo and Quincy Hofstad joining us today. Uh, we're going to be reading Quincy's script, uh, Close Quarters. Uh, Nira, real quick, do you just want to say hi to the audience, kind of introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about your background? Hi, audience. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Nero, and uh, I work at Arizona Studios as a um, one of uh, the members of the creative team. Um, so I guess I'm an editor, uh, camera operator, and a bunch of other stuff that the studio needs me to be, so. Very talented DP, oh, okay. wonderful artist, okay. illustrator, storyboard. Uh, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, Too much? No, maybe. But then we have Quincy over here, right? Yes, um, our guest this week, Quincy. Yeah. Um, Quincy is a music composer. I mean, is that what you identify mostly as, or what um, do you normally tell people what you do? I don't tell them anything. <laughs> <laughs> What's, but do tell us your full yeah. name. Oh, uh, Quincy Lee John Francis Walsh Hofstead. I uh, have a long name. Okay. Yeah. Social Security number? Social Security number. No, I, I could get into it if you really want me to. <laughs> okay. Um, Quincy, thank you so much for agreeing to let us read your script today. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to lay down some basic guidelines and rules for the podcast. The whole point of this podcast is to share creative ideas and help each other grow. With that said, any of the comments, critiques that we give here on the podcast, they are meant for the hopes of improvement and growth. Uh, we're not here to criticize or discourage writers, no matter what stage of their career that they're in. If anything that we say you don't agree with or you don't want to use, that's okay. Take it or leave it. It won't hurt our feelings either way. Vice versa, we're here to take hear your opinions, get your advice. Um, so we want this to be an overall positive experience. If anyone crosses any lines, don't hesitate to tell us. Um, anyway, we're going to hop into this. So the first step is we're going to have Quincy go ahead and read us his logline to help us understand what the script is about. And then we'll go ahead and divvy out roles and head into the script read. All right. Well, my logline is uh, three, men, uh, three men's road trip to play a show in Phoenix ends horribly after one man's external aggression consumes him. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That's spicy, spicy, yeah. spicy uh, script. Yeah. All right, so I am taking a look at the script right now, and I'm seeing, I know obviously the main characters, Will, David, and Cisco. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that anyone else has any dialogue except for those three. Nope. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and take turns real quick. Quincy, do you have a preference? Is there any particular um, character you'd want to read for? I suppose I'd go with Will. Okay. Seems like a little likeable. bit of... <laughs> yeah, he's like a quiet sort of guy. They're actually all based on different like personalities. That oh, I, I was about that to have. kind yeah, of ask. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially with Cisco, that's not like an everyday name. I have only met one other Cisco. Yeah. So, is there a reason why that guy is named that character oh, is named um, is Cisco? Well, when I was originally writing it, um, Cisco was based on uh, Sissy Bayo. It's like uh, in the 14th century. Um, women would have, like, a man on the side. And oh. so that's what I was basing it so on. he's just a hoe. Like, my character, like please, <laughs> my preference, <laughs> I will take Cisco, by the way. So um, yeah. if, if, if that's still... If, if it's I? still on the table. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think that Quincy only laid claim to Will, so yeah. fair enough. Well, um, hello, David, then. Hi, David. <laughs> yes, I'll be the most generic white character name. That makes sense. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I might be jumping ahead, but like, is there something that we can ask in terms of our characters? I don't 
know if I'm supposed to ask um, our writer here, Quincy, if I'm supposed to read Cisco a certain way, or oh. do I just interpret like that ethnicity or anything like that? Well, or no, like, uh, well, I guess like, I'll. Does he have an accent? <laughs> no, uh, maybe I'll feel the uh, emotions <laughs> while, while we're reading, but I don't. Yeah, what I don't want to do. My only fear is I don't want to have spoilers right before we okay. get into the script. My hope okay. is it is to read it raw so that the audience is experiencing it as we're experiencing it. That's fair. I mean, I I will. I will preface to the audience, we did cheat a little. Like, we have read these, or at least yeah. skimmed them, if nothing skimmed else. Them. I've yeah. definitely read this script yeah. <laughs> multiple times because I read yeah. it the last draft, mm -hmm. or I believe the last draft. I think draft it was like three Quincy drafts had. ago. <laughs> three drafts ago. Yeah. I read it a while ago. Yeah. Since then, it has updated, so it is fresh to me a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're not going to put any context in yet and Fair then we'll enough. just ask questions at the end. Okay. Okay. Sounds awesome. good. Awesome. And then who wants to read narration? Don't everybody raise their hand at once. Oh, narration. I will read narration. That's, all right. <laughs> That's David just, for the win. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. External David's house day. Will is loading bags into the van. Through the van, you can see David having a heated argument with his wife. When Will is done, he gets in the front passenger side and turns on the van. David, we should get going. It's going to be night soon. David turns to Will. Oh, that's me. <laughs> 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 this is going to happen a lot. Oh, yeah, boy, yeah. this is going to happen is, a lot. Is there any other characters we should watch <laughs> out for? Ooh, sorry. Ooh, yeah. Is there any other characters we need to watch out for? Um, no one I, else has dialogue. Okay, cool. That so, sounds good then. Yeah, oh, uh, I almost easier. dropped the recorder. We, yeah, so. we almost lost. It's all right. Like, <laughs> oh. Everything's still good. Everything. Yeah, okay? I just had to make sure the Check. headphones were in all the way. All right. Check. We're, we're Check. Good. Still we're good. recording. All right. Everything's still rolling. Should is the task cam on? Yep. Yep. Okay. Task cam's always okay, okay. So everything's fine. <laughs> Classic task, task cam. Are okay. Brought to you by task cam. Task cam. Task cam. Give us money. We wish. Task cam. All right. I'm sorry, I'm going to pick it up then. <laughs> David turns to Will. All right, I'm coming. David turns to his wife. We will talk about this when I get home. David gets in the van, and as he van pulls, wait, oh, wow. that can't be right. There's going to be a lot of grammatical errors. Yes. That's a commonality Classic. with screenwriters. So, Classic Quincy, you yeah. know, right now. It's not on just, a... trust me, it's not just you, no. it's all of us. Writing on an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote this on an iPhone? Did you yeah. Really? That is impressive. <laughs> I do my best. That's patience right there. Right. Effort. <laughs> All right. Um, David gets in the van, and as the van pulls out of the driveway, his wife walks inside the house and slams the door. Internal van dusk. The van pulls up to an apartment gate. David lowers his window to enter the code. Can you give Cisco a call to make sure he's ready? Will pulls out his phone and starts to enter Cisco's number. Never mind, he's out front. Cisco sitting on the curb in a semi crisscross. Oh, oh my god. Cisco sitting on the curb in a semi crisscross, holding his leg in with his arms <laughs> and duffel bag at his feet. The van pulls up, and Cisco opens the back door and puts his bag in, then closes the back door and walks around the side and gets in. Damn, what took you so long? Sorry, had to get fuel up uh, on the way. Will looks at David, but says nothing. Where's your drums? I talked to Jack this morning, and he said he would set up my old kit at the venue. Oh, that's good. Less work for you to do. Yep. Cisco lights a cigarette, breathes in deeply, and exhales. <sighs> Let's get out of here. The van drives off, leaving the apartments behind. Internal van night. Sitting at a truck stop on the side of the highway, Will sleeps in the passenger seat. David and Cisco both get out to stretch their legs. I'm off to the little ladies' room. Sounds good. I'm just grabbing something out of my bag before I go. Cisco heads towards the restroom, and David heads to the back of the van. Will wakes up from the rummaging in the back of the van. Internal van continuous. Will is sitting in the passenger seat on his phone. Cisco enters the van and leans into Will's personal area, getting a look at his face. Will leans back, not taking his eyes off his phone. What's going on? You see a lot of lizard or something? Cisco laughs at his own joke. Nope, I'm good. Will pauses. What's a lot lizard? Truck stop prostitution. Cisco is clearly excited. Oh. 
Yeah. Will reopens his phone and Cisco awkwardly pats his leg like drums. So you still doing that solo project? Yeah. That's cool. Our, oh, okay, so there's. Continued. In, in, interesting. <laughs> um, so m maybe I can talk about this real quick. Yeah. Um, I see like um, both Cisco, um, both lines come up like right after each other. So I'm not sure if there was supposed to be a break or maybe there's just a page error. Yeah, or whatever. so. It was a. Uh... I, for, I forgot to type it in, but he's going to like take like one of those awkward like pauses. Okay. So like, there is like maybe so a beat, beat or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, cool. That would be one of my assumptions. but. Okay, you say okay. that's cool, and I'll say beat, and then you can say the next line. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's cool. Beat. Are, oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Are you going to start doing shows? I hear you're, uh, you've started to get a large following. No, it's just a studio project. Fun. David enters the van and excitedly looks at Cisco. Have you guys seen the lot lizard here? Oh my god, right? I don't I didn't even know that was a thing, by the way. Yeah, it's a uh, my dad's a truck driver, so That's oh, what they're so, called? So yeah, he so he sees a lot of lizards now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Internal van day. The van passes the welcome to Phoenix sign. Boys have arrived. External motel night. As the van pulls into the parking lot, David turns down the radio. So, it wasn't in budget for everyone to get their own room this time. Someone will have to share a bed. No worries. I'll just sleep in the van. Cisco, you can share my bed. It's all good. The van has better back support anyways. Back support? Right. Well, you have fun with that. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Internal van night. Cisco opens the door to the van, holding a bag full of snacks in one hand and a bottle of whiskey in the other. He closes the door and plops into the chair. Cisco opens the bottle of whiskey and takes a huge gulp. He leans back and sighs loudly. He then unlocks his phone and opens photos. Cisco looks through Facebook photos of David and his wife. You're an idiot. Cisco jumps and looks behind the chair to see Will laying on the floor. <laughs> well, what the f How long have you been there? You always had a hard time keeping secrets. Cisco hands the whiskey bottle to Will. So why are you out here? David was on his phone, arguing with her. I think she's cheating. Will gives Cisco a curious look. Two weeks ago, she showed up at my door, terrified. She was going on and on about David. Cisco takes a swig of whiskey. Nothing happened, I swear. We have all been through too much together. But after that, she went home. Haven't seen or talked to her since. The motel room opens, and David steps out, looking angry. Talk later? Yeah. Will snatches the bottle of whiskey and takes a giant gulp. External motel day. Will and Cisco lean on the van while David is off to the side talking on the phone. Everyone now in the van. I just talked to Jack and he is ready there and getting set up. He said all we have to do is sound check. Well, I guess Jack isn't just some new guy in the house anymore. Guess he finally got his testes in the mail. They all laugh. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was so scared I was going to mispronounce testes. Testes? Is that testes, it's right? It's testes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Testicles. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Test, test. Testes. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Oh, <laughs> Internal venue day. Uh, so it says 45 seconds or? Uh, 45, 45 seconds. Okay, so the next 45 seconds to a minute and a half of an actual live performance. Jack said he posted it by next week. He just wants to make the edits a bit better and do some color correction. Dude, that looks legit. I know, right? To think he would have gotten so good at this stuff. It's crazy. I'll send you guys a link as soon as it's up. David's phone rings. He sends a call to voicemail. Hey, can we go to a bar? I could use a drink. External motel night. Cisco is asleep in the van. He's woken up by David yelling loudly on the phone. Why can't you just be honest? I've given you every chance. Who is he? Cisco lays still, not breathing. Oh, really now? Going to hang up on me? Pick up your goddamn phone. Cisco unlocks his phone and goes to contacts. Now on Messenger, he texts, I'll tell him it's me. Cisco takes a deep breath. He clicks send. External motel day. Will and Cisco load the van. David throws his phone, shattering it. Passing each other between loads, Will gives Cisco a concerned look. Neither say a word. David goes into the motel and brings a bag to the van. 
You want to talk about it? David glares angrily at Cisco, then walks back to the motel room. Guess not. External road, late afternoon. Everyone's quiet and listening to the radio. Just before Will can speak, the back driver's side wheel explodes. Fuck. David gets out the van and slams the door shut, screaming outside. Will gives a concerned look at Cisco. I'll handle this. You just stay in here. Cisco quietly exits the van. External road dusk. Will still sitting in the same seat, playing games on his phone with earbuds in. It's noticeably quiet, so Will takes out his earbuds. I have something I need to tell you. What is it? I'm the reason Julie hasn't been coming home every night. You motherfucker! Will gets out and starts walking towards the back of the van. David, please, don't... I don't want to hear it from you. Will turns the back corner of the van. Bang! Cisco's lifeless body falls. Will drops to his knees. David walks towards the front of the van, gets in, and drives off. Still on his knees, Will crawls towards Cisco's dead body, pushing past the old tire to get to him. End. I died. I died. Yep. Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. That's so all you can offer when you're reading a fresh script is to be the character who gets murdered. All right. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a Quincy script if something if someone doesn't die. <laughs> if someone doesn't die. So, real quick, I just want to make sure that your writing experience up to this point, help me out with that. Uh, it's my first script. Okay. So, this is the first story that you've done. Mm hmm Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Any yeah. like other forms of writing before now, like short short stories or novelistic, anything like that? Okay. Not really. Cool. No. This podcast is brought to you by Arizona Studios. Arizona Studios, a full service video content specialist. We're here to illuminate your message, to compel your audience to take the right action. For more information, head to our website at arizonastudios.com and be sure to tune in for more content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and transition to any questions the two of us might have, or Quincy, if you have anything you want to talk about. Um, okay. I mean, like we can take it t uh, page by page if you want. Um, that's kind of how I structured my brain to work in terms of oh, okay. my note taking while reading, you know, mm -hmm. kind of situation. Um, I'm okay with that. Uh -huh. I'd be interested to hear some like some... character backstory info and things okay. like that. I think yeah. would yeah. give us a little more context. For sure. So uh, Quincy can kind of give us a lowdown of yeah. his yeah. thought process and everything. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. So you told us these characters were inspired by. By me. By okay, so mm -hmm. when you say by you, like yeah. each of them are a different part of you, or what? So like I tend to have like three different like personalities that I don't like about myself. Okay. So like one part of me is like I just tend to sit there when there's arguing going on. I don't want to involve well. myself. Yeah. And then the other part of me is like. I don't want to like let someone be sad or be angry, so like I'll pretend like everything's going happy, uh, hunky dory, and I'll like try to cheer them up. And then there's the other side of me who's like wants to control a situation, and so that's like each character was based on those different parts that I don't like about myself. Wow, that's really deep and also <laughs> a little bit sad. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, am I allowed to make some jokes about that? Yeah. Like, of which course. Quincy am I talking to right <laughs> which now? Am I talking 473. <laughs> oh, oh, God. 0.27. 0.27. There's decimal versions of your personality. Exactly. What is that one movie? Sorry, I'm going off topic. The one with uh, James McAvoy. Oh. Um, split. 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 Yes. split. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. my goodness. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that's, yeah. that's like the uh, underlying. Okay. deep part of the story that people probably wouldn't get. Okay. And then like it's top layer is just like uh, just when you're in like a car together on a road trip and one guy clearly is just angry and like I'm sure we've all like been in that situation where like they just end up getting in a giant heated argument over like the most mundane thing like the tire goes flat and uh, so I just wanted to make a simple story because it's more of like a visual idea okay. so I wanted to shoot the entire thing in a van or like have like within like arms reach of the van yeah if that makes sense uh, no no that's that's actually pretty cool so in terms of this we're not actually seeing the venue we're not seeing mm -hmm. you know other yes. parts it's just like the van itself is almost a character in an environment mm -hmm. yeah it's like 
me as a human body. Oh, you know, yeah, like yeah. a container. I like oh, that. Okay. That's really that cool. That makes sense. And uh, so I wanted them to be like a vessel. Me. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like the uh, the van is like me as a person, and like music is a giant part of me. Yeah. You know, because I've worked on you know films with music, and I've you know. So I actually wanted to talk about that a little bit because the plot does pretty strongly revolve around mm -hmm. obviously like people who work in the music industry mm -hmm. and it pulls on like elements of that, mm -hmm. especially like for indie musicians. Yeah. And so I was curious, like from your perspective, like how how involved are you in that community? Like how did you get uh, involved in that community? Well, I uh, when I was in high school, I started out with like rock music and then I was like, Oh, I'm gonna move to New York now. So then I was in New York, and out there they got me into rap music. So that's actually my little uh, little clique of friends. And uh, so at one point I, I got like top fifty on SoundCloud, and uh, like that was when Little Uzi Vert was about to blow up. Yeah. So I was like right above him, and then I was like non-existent again. Oh. <laughs> so I stopped like making music for like the longest time. Can and you, real quick, just for the audience's sake, knowing that you are like there, can you tell us the name of the track? Oh. Like, yeah, it's uh, Keep know? Your Head Up. Keep Your Head Up? Okay. Yeah. Quincy Hofstad, like what would be uh, your Quincy name? IQ. Quincy IQ, okay. Yeah. One yeah. of his many alter egos, gotcha. Yes, one of the Quincy's. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So, yeah. the, so you went out to New York, you mm -hmm. got into the rap community, yep. and you did that for a while, and then how'd you end up back here, dare I ask? Um, I don't want to ask so, you too personal. Oh, well, yeah. I, so I grew up in foster care. I got adopted by my sister, and so she was the one that said, we're going to move to New York because she wanted to get away from Arizona. And uh, so while they were out there, um, she just was like, we can't live out here anymore, and then was like, we're going back. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then back to Arizona he came. Exactly. Have you been involved in the music community since getting back to Arizona? Um, not not as much. I uh, like I'm more of like a studio artist now, cause like I don't know. It's like live shows. I get scared around people, so it's like um, I don't know. It's yeah, not not the most fun. Yeah. It's a good source of income, cause you can do like a lot of shows and pull in the money but it's like is it worth the people <laughs> <laughs> man i ask myself that every day like all the man. Time. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much any time i'm about to walk outside like is right. it worth what <laughs> no. i'm about to experience are those hot cheetos necessary <laughs> <laughs> man i've had real debates like that like how bad yeah. do you want it man <laughs> right like the car has air conditioning yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if everybody listening is from Arizona, but this podcast does take place in Phoenix, Arizona, and mm -hmm. everyone here lives there. And I mean, brought to you by Arizona brought to Studios. By Arizona, so yeah, so. it's a pretty toasty place to be. <laughs> of, uh, Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Arizona yeah. Studios yeah. of Portland, Maybe, Oregon. Of Portland, Oregon. <laughs> you know what? That would be edgy, though, right? Like, that's yeah. some advertising right there. Yeah. It makes you really stand out. Mm -hmm. exactly. I'm just going to keep lying on the next on podcast. The next it's podcast. like, Arizona Studios from uh, Utah, yeah. Michigan. You're talking, like, <laughs> Utah, <laughs> Michigan. Exactly. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, plot twist. <laughs> that's that's background on you. I mean, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a little bit about Quincy and just I'm, you know, I feel like who you are as a person obviously shapes yeah. the way that you write and the story that you built here. Oh yeah, especially given that it's so directly derivative of your personality. Yeah. Well, we've got a knock at the door, folks. Special guest. Special Other guest. Special guest. <laughs> Gre greetings. Hi. Did you hear that? Hear what? The Big laugh. Uh, the happy birthday? No. Oh. Someone's birthday? Not even at all. I guess so. Oh, Tell them be quiet. Cake, ha man. Happy birthday to someone. Okay. <laughs> Did Ashley, bring canes? Ashley, sneak know. us in some cake. Come back later. I'll try. I haven't even got to my first we, we page of notes. Late. Just, just <laughs> let Jim know that we're a little bit late. Okay. okay. All right, cool. Okay. Mm. All right, so going... <laughs> now that we got our, our time person come in, okay, we, so, we move on to the script? Or? Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I asked my questions. Do you, do you have any questions for Quincy before hopping into notes, feedback, um, things like that? Not for Quincy specifically. Like, oh. Like, well, I mean, like, oh, are these questions per, for, like, personal questions for Quincy? Are you, are you, well, are those questions? Well, anything that helps us understand the story. Oh, oh, right. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, um, let's see. 
Maybe. Okay. <laughs> like, if we move, I, right, I might, you, I might have Nero, something. Nero's a note guy. He's got, uh, already has, like, notes in his head for each page. Let's let's just Nothing. do it page by page. Whole filing cabinet of notes. Whole filing cabinet, okay. yeah. Jeez, I pressure now. We don't have that much time. <laughs> All right. But no, no, seriously, though, I really dig that that's the visual in terms of how the narrative progresses. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you know, it's hard to see that in a script. Right. That the whole thing more or less takes place in the van, whether everyone's um, there or not, right. Every, if everyone's present or not, you know? Yeah. I really like that visual. And with that being said, like, I wouldn't have gotten that, yeah. like, <laughs> through the script. Maybe that's a note now that I've, I've learned that. Maybe that's mm-hmm. something that we can kind of talk about in terms of maybe almost like what I said earlier that the van itself can be a character. Maybe right. just adding more characterization of that environment, aka the van. Right. Um, and that there are moments where we're staying at the van and mm-hmm. no one's there yet. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It. Okay. To me, it almost feels like um, I might be getting a little ahead of myself, but to me, it almost feels like everyone's just popping in and out like without warning. Right. And um, so at some of those moments, like when Cisco. He said that he's sleeping at the van, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, um, Will's there. It's like, oh. where did he come from? You so, know. Real, real quick, I just uh-huh. want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Are you? I think the gist of what you're getting at is like adding some establishing, like context at the beginning of the scenes before we get into the actual like conversations, like the dialogue and the action. I think that's fair to say. Okay. In order to kind of help More background. With yeah. yeah, like even, because some of, you, you know, you do have, like, descriptions or um, slug lines where it says, like, external road or external motel. Like, I don't think that I'm led to immediately assume that we're looking specifically at the van or from mm-hmm. the perspective of the van. Right. So with scenes like that, saying, like, the van sits in front of a stingy, um, like, seedy-looking motel with blah, yeah. blah, 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 like. And more you know. uh, scene description stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. that would help transition a little more comfortably that's a really good note you know that's oh yeah yeah definitely um like i want i want you to keep me at the van Mm -hmm. or keep me near the van for sure um so yeah you're right um with that being said okay (laughs) i'm trying to ring myself in or bring myself in but like um for the first page when we're seeing um you know, them loading up and everything like that. Um, the first, like, thing I thought of was adding a little bit more layers to that. Mm-hmm. So not only just establishing, oh, the van is parked at one of their houses, right? David's house, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for sure. But, you know, you can definitely add, like, layers of different environmental things that might kind of, like, add to the characterization of the band members being all there, like, you know, mm-hmm. if you're kind of packing things in and they're musically inclined, maybe they're playing music while it's happening, you so, know? So, wait real quick, uh-huh. because Go on ahead. the subject of the intro, like, I think the big layer that's happening in the beginning scene is that what we're really seeing more so is Will's packing the van by himself, uh-huh, yeah. and David is arguing with his wife. And that's like a continued thing with David throughout the whole yeah. piece is like every time anything important is, or not even that important, but the socializing between mm-hmm. Will and Cisco and just them being there feels so separate from mm-hmm. David because he's off like on the phone with his wife or just being a dick for no reason. Yeah. Or, um, <laughs> So I do think that there is like an attempt like at that in the beginning while cuz we do describe hey Will's loading up this van and in mm-hmm. the meanwhile we can see David and his wife arguing in the background but I would say that I think probably should have said foreground. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of what Nero's pointing out is that there is kind of like a lack of descriptive words mm-hmm. and terms like Yeah, I was afraid to put that stuff in cuz I I had heard um watching a bunch of YouTube videos to keep it like short and simple. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and another like line for screenwriting and I know Nero will totally understand this cuz he's he's really good with using like good visually descriptive terms in his writing. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's intimidating for a lot of screenwriters cuz you get taught to avoid like 
words that end in ly or things that are too like over describing because again it's like too wordy mm -hmm. but it's also you know for the person reading your script this is still a story just like them reading a book or listening to an audiobook right and so it still has to have the elements of listening to um, any other story where it engages with you know emotional emotional terms that would help us like feel the environment and the characters I mean it's, I, I, no, nodding I, yeah. his head I'm nodding I'm like, my head yeah. loudly loudly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just head banging <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah there's there's that um, let's see is, is there anything else you want to add in terms of the first page no I mean I'd like to hear Quincy's thoughts like you know Oh. Where were you coming from with the oh. with the subplot of the whole, you know, is she, isn't she cheating? And I right. also feel like as the story takes off and we hear Cisco talk to Will about it, it mm -hmm. sounds like there isn't actually an affair happening. Am I no, wrong? and that's like part of like Cisco's whole uh, personality is that he he'll like take the fall for a friend, so that way like um. Like he like so that way David can be like just put it to rest finally just be like oh it's just me it's like yeah. like sure I'm the I'm the reason because you know so Cisco isn't actually dating so he's not David's wife he, no I guess I was gonna no be she's question just been doing though. like her own thing in in the world trying to get away from David because he's like controlling and so <laughs> well Cisco that was definitely the wrong choice for yeah, sure right? <laughs> we um, saw yeah. how that panned out yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, and that, it tends to backfire in like a there's lot of the times there's almost like a moral lesson in that though mm -hmm. for people who are don't like, take the blame personality mm -hmm. well like no that, so, like, that people pleaser you know the, yeah. like, oh sticking your neck out yeah it's gonna yeah. get chopped yeah yeah <laughs> it's gonna go like a pow <laughs> I'm just gonna say it um, I'm, I'm the only woman in the room and I don't mm -hmm. want to be that person, but yeah, there's a sort of lacking of, um, like development for the wife for us to mm -hmm. have context for that. Right. Like, I'll be honest. I feel like it's kind of vague whether or not mm -hmm. they are or are not actually oh. having sex and Cisco True. just is or isn't being honest with Will when he talks to him. Mm -hmm. Um, that was m my perspective and I know that's tough but I it's like I like how concise things are and I like the the same concept we talked about earlier with sticking with the band and and staying at that band I suppose I could add like a maybe like phone conversations between her and Cisco and stuff like yeah, that or even like if she texted like if we notice that Cisco's like on his phone every now and again but we don't know what he's doing or okay. if he gets a text from her like oh my god he's driving me crazy mm -hmm. but even then I'm worried that if we show too much engagement with Cisco and it might and lead people to believe that it's will actually it lead happening. people to believe they're having an affair yeah. yeah I don't know Nero what do you think maybe like one of those like um like uh you're you're looking from like over Cisco's shoulder at yeah. his text messages where like um, he won't leave me alone, um, blah, 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 blah. And then he's like, um, just don't pick up your phone for him or something like that. I also feel like it would help, like, I almost think, like, maybe if Cisco was there with them at David's house at the beginning, we could establish that Cisco and the wife have, like, a friendship or some sort of relationship. I'm and nodding again. Sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah. I am. I am very, very much agree in agreement to like seeing um, sort of a relationship between Cisco and David's wife. So that we okay. know that they're friends. Like we buy that they're friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. That Cisco is not just out of nowhere just to try to make David feel better. Say, yeah, it's been me. You know, like it almost feels like a um, suspicion that isn't um, validated mm -hmm. because if I had a best friend that kept seeing my my wife mm -hmm. and upset, I right? and I have a suspicion that my wife is cheating on me mm -hmm. where's my suspicion gonna go to yeah. exactly you know, that exactly. kind of situation yeah. Um, yeah that would really help the tension between them yeah and the tension is always nice mm -hmm. in the script man exactly. keep it tight yeah <laughs> <laughs> I almost think Cisco could try to break up the fight and you can tell that he's Oh, yeah. Like trying to kind of pull David back and like, right. hey man, it's okay. Can, like, 
don't it's whatever you guys are fighting about like it's not mm -hmm. a big deal like just calm down mm, right um and then before they leave like maybe giving the wife a hug goodbye or something to indicate that you know they're buds like they're pals right i don't I know. like that idea um, and then i can rearrange it um because I, I was trying to have multiple like locations or whatever but i also didn't want to have like too many characters so i suppose that would uh make sense to have them all at the beginning yeah and then you could still yeah. even like the van thing still applies like i feel like that mm -hmm. scene sounds like you're almost watching it from the van's perspective looking yeah. at the fight so, so it's like um so like the way i see it is like the house is like right um <laughs> trying Kinda to explain listener. this over let's the let's draw you a diagram <laughs> yes let's draw the diagram so the house is probably in front of the van okay um the front door is off to the right of the passenger side okay. towards the like the diagonal front oh, and so okay. we're starting in the back of the van with the yeah. doors open and will's putting stuff in yeah and then there's a camera move where you're going to go like through the doors and you're in the van in the van so we're in inside the van when we're seeing the fight. Yeah. Happen. As a DP, I can totally I know, see this. I know, it sounds so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I have it all I mean, in the brain. I just don't know how to yeah. put like, it on paper. I don't know how you do it without, like, mm -hmm. a crane. I got an idea. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my brain tends to work like, I'm going to shoot this. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, huh, the this script, right? I'm going to make this work. Um, yeah. But by the way, speaking of the van and kind of, like, making it as a character in itself like um I'm, I'm not sure if you like that idea or not but i'm about to ask you um how you would feel about the idea that um because to me the van almost consistently consistently has been a sort of safe haven for the three boys mm -hmm. they find um themselves using it to kind of like uh feel i don't know if safe is the word mm -hmm. but they're, like their little safe spot. Yeah, they're okay. able to like use a van to like kind of contain mm -hmm. their emotions or whatever. So yeah, um, or even just comfort level. You right. know, and then like when they're all together, they're definitely less uh, rambunctious. They're more friendly. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if you had David, like definitely argue, but he's like using this moment of like, hey, there's this trip that's about to happen. I'm gonna be in this van, like you know. Mm -hmm. trying to separate him himself from the the real world of maybe his wife is cheating on him right that could be a way you can kind of go about uh, creating this this certain space not just a physical space but like a emotional and mental state for right. your characters um, so not... basically you're talking about like David whenever he's in the van his personality having a shift yeah like happier yeah. yeah yeah i can see that or at ease yeah because he there, there's that one line in there where he gets in the van and he's excited because you know he just saw a lot lizard or whatever yeah, yeah. and i yeah. like i feel very whatchamacallit like for me like if i'm gonna kind of try to relate this um when it comes to college like mm -hmm. college yeah, is fun definitely. time but like i feel that sense of like happiness like leaving my, my, my parents' place and I got inside the vehicle to go to college mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, bye parents, you know. Yeah. I feel I feel an emotional and like energy shift to a more positive, you mm -hmm. know, light that I'm like gonna go have fun exactly. going back to college rather than staying at home for the summer. You know what I mean? Right. It's like <laughs> so, a happy experience. Yeah. Um so you can kinda like use that maybe maybe that'll give you some ideas of how you can you know, help develop your characters. Definitely, definitely. All right, so we do actually need to wrap this up. So what I am going to say is let's go ahead and just close any closing thoughts or ideas, feedback, and then um, if we do want to keep talking about the script, obviously off of the podcast, we'll be happy to continue to have this conversation. Um, definitely, I hope that anybody listening to this out there, wherever you're listening, if you're on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, Facebook, or YouTube, please feel free to comment at us, um, give your feedback, your ideas. We're going to pass those along to Quincy. I'm mm -hmm. sure he's happy to hear what all of you think out there. Definitely. Um, and if you aren't listening somewhere where you can comment at us, feel free to send us an email at Arizona, info at ArizonaStudios.com. 
Um, okay, guys, any any closing remarks or thoughts about the script before we end this? Dang, this podcast is so short. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's like a bunch of other things. That, 45 minutes just know. isn't enough time. All right, so, no. <laughs> um, well, I mean, cool. I, I think this is a really cool concept, especially if we're shooting it in the visual style that you just described. I thought mm-hmm. I thought that's very neat and also very... Um, Notice that Nero yeah. says we're shooting it because he mm-hmm. always thinks of things as if yeah. he's going to be the Sorry. one shooting it. Sorry. Well, you're welcome <laughs> anyway, to join me. You know. but yeah. It's cool. Like, it's cool. Yes. <laughs> it's cool. I dig it. Thanks. I dig it. Yeah. Cool. Quincy, I mean, do you have anything else that um, we did or didn't share today oh. about this project or your idea uh-huh. that you want to talk about? No, I think you guys definitely gave me a lot to think about. Especially with Hopefully in a mission yeah. accomplished. Yeah, mission accomplished. We did Success. it. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're wrapping it. <laughs> Don't use any of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He takes no notes from us. Oh, okay, it's cool. Okay. Leaves it exactly as is. <laughs> I think it, just, it was perfect. Um, you know, right. when I was back in the indie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I agree with Nero. I think that all of us, when we read this, were drawn to the concept as a really mm-hmm. cool idea. And I, I love hearing you talk about like mm-hmm. the different parts of your personality playing into these characters. And that gives us a lot more context and depth. And I'm excited to see where you go with it moving forward. Thanks. Can I say one last thing? Yeah, go ahead, yes. Nero. Okay, you can probably cut this or not. But like, um, I need a little bit, like my suspension of disbelief is kind of like, it's 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 being uh, challenged because okay. like that Cisco gets killed mm-hmm. by David, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, I need more of, I guess, foreshadow or yeah. Like, I, I need something that's there. See, in like, like the original script, I had a uh, there there was like a when he was rummaging through his bag, he, uh, Will he woke up to a, a gun click. So oh. so like a gun uh, racking. Okay. And so, like, that's what I was going to do, but then I was thinking about it, and I was like, maybe he wants to use an L wrench to kill him instead. And well, that's what I were... would figure. Like, an, mm-hmm. like I was just about to say, an L wrench. Like, let's say in the beginning, you know, they're just kind of like getting the van ready to go. He's working on the tires. Yeah. That already, that visual of mm-hmm. an L wrench being worked at, yeah. and then the character like twirling yeah. it around. And to the see tire that, comes up again later yeah, to, when it blows. yeah, it's yeah. kind of like uh, the milk in uh, *Inglorious Bastards*. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I just, I would love to see some sort of payoff. That's what I look for in terms of scripts. It's okay. a good payoff. How to write for murder, folks? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. So. Thanks again, Quincy. We really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, Nero, for your feedback, and uh, we'll see you all, or you'll hear us again next time on a new script on the block. Later. Later.